Hey folks, how we doing? Cam Rogers here for NFL Daily with the latest NFL headlines. So let's get into it. We've got breaking news to report right off the top. Sheldon Richardson is headed to the Minnesota Vikings. We like to talk about how good that Philadelphia Eagles front line is, but the Minnesota Vikings are going to be a force next year. So it's a reported one-year deal. Richardson joins a front line with Everson Griffin and Linval Joseph. I'm telling you, that's a scary front seven. And you look at Richardson, ranked as the 27th best defensive lineman, according to Pro Football Focus, a year ago. The Minnesota Vikings are going to be a team to be reckoned with. There's no doubt about that. And you look at Anthony Barr at the linebacker position. You can look at the secondary as well. A very important pickup for the Vikings. The rich get richer, in a sense. And how about this for a recruiting pattern? The Vikings picked up Richardson with a private plane, right? And then... When he comes over to Minnesota, actually has lunch with Kirk Cousins, the new quarterback there in Minnesota. So the Vikings know how to do things over there with the recruiting process. Sheldon Richardson, a lot of people thought he was going to go to the New York Jets because he never really wanted to leave when he got traded to the Seattle Seahawks. So a very important signing for the Minnesota Vikings. They got to keep pace with those Philadelphia Eagles. Next headline here. Speaking of those Eagles, they have cut Vinnie Curry. And this is hardly a surprise. A lot of people out there knew that the Eagles are going to move on from the defensive lineman and Curry, a very good player at that. But his price tag was really high, so it was hard for the Eagles to really trade him. And oh, by the way, the Eagles did ask Curry if he were willing to take a pay cut. He refused, so Curry is on his way. He ranked as the 21st best edge rusher, according to Pro Football Focus, in 2017. And in an NFL draft pool where there's not a lot of great talent at the edge rusher position, I expect Vinnie Curry to get a very big share of the market interest. And I'm looking at teams such as the Indianapolis Colts and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Both those squads finished in the bottom two in terms of sacks produced in 2017. So Vinnie Curry going to get a lot of interest, and he's going to get paid as well. Next headline, Preston Brown has signed with the Cincinnati Bengals, and this is quite important because, well, there's something going on with Vontez Perfect. I'll talk about that in a matter of moments. The Bengals also lost linebacker Kevin Minter to free agency. So Preston Brown, he comes in. He's just 25 years old. Also saw some interest from the New England Patriots. Brown was the 42nd ranked linebacker, according to Pro Football Focus. Can you tell I like Pro Football Focus? Great tool, by the way. Look, he can add some solid insurance to that linebacking core, and I think he'll be a quality starter for the Cincinnati Bengals. And we'll talk about Vontez Perfect in a little bit, but there's some uncertainty surrounding his situation. So stay tuned for that. But Preston Brown, a member of the Cincinnati Bengals. How about Ed Dixon? He's now a member of the Seattle Seahawks. So Seattle, well, they just lost Jimmy Graham. So bye-bye, Jimmy. Insert Ed Dixon as a replacement. Obviously a bit of a downgrade. But Ed Dixon, primarily a blocker for the Carolina Panthers until last year because Greg Olson got hurt. Ed Dixon saw his fair share of receptions in that offense. The Seahawks are also in danger of losing Luke Wilson who is visiting with the Detroit Lions. So all things considered, not a bad signing for Seattle. But if you want to look at a loser of the free agency period, you got to wonder if the Seattle Seahawks are on that list. Although bringing in Ed Dixon, really not an awful signing, but losing out on Jimmy Graham is really tough as well. So Ed Dixon going to Seattle. Next headline here, Alex Okafor remaining with the New Orleans Saints. So this is really important for their defense and the continuity's sake. Defensive end Alex Okafor hanging around in New Orleans had a pretty darn good season when he saw the field in 2017. He's still recovering from that torn Achilles that he suffered after 11 games last year. But through that amount, he had 43 tackles, five for loss, four and a half sacks, four passes defensed, and two forced fumbles. It's a two-year contract worth $10 million and... This signing indicates to me 
that the New Orleans Saints are confident in Alex Okafor's recovery. So I think he'll be just fine for that defense. A defense that's going to be very darn good because, oh, by the way, they're bringing in Patrick Robinson, the fantastic slot corner. So Alex Okafor remaining with the New Orleans Saints. Next headline, Bashad Breeland has failed his physical. He will not be signing with the Carolina Panthers. He will be back into the open market, and this came through the wires a few moments ago. What's going on with field physicals, by the way? Ryan Grant, Bashad Breland, former Redskins players too. Very interesting. Anywho, the Panthers are back to square one because, well, they lost Daryl Worley via the trade, right? He's off to Philadelphia. Breland is not going to sign with them, so there's a gaping hole in that secondary. I know you have Captain Munnerlyn and Bradbury, but they're not fantastic corners by any means. Breland had agreed to join the Panthers on a three-year, $24 million deal with $11 million guaranteed. And yeah, the physical didn't exactly work out. So the Panthers, they have to go back to the drawing board. Breland reportedly suffered an infection after cutting his foot and is, quote, a few months away from being able to pass a physical. That according to an anonymous source that has been uh, swirling out there on NFL.com. So looks like Breland will have to work on that before he goes to another NFL team. I mentioned Vontez Perfect. And he's facing a suspension, according to multiple reports. It's a four-game suspension for PED use. So Vontez Perfect back in the negative headlines, shall we say. And he stands to lose approximately $1.68 million if the suspension is upheld. If he loses his appeal to this four-game suspension, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Ready? The guarantees in his three-year, $33 million contract will void. That's nearly $11.3 million. So despite the troubles of Vontez Perfect, he's still a pretty darn good player. He ranked as the 12th best linebacker, according to Pro Football Focus in 2017. Only played in 10 games, though, so not a full sample size. And he's missing these games, not because of injury's sake, but a lot of times due to suspensions. So Vontez Perfect could be on the chopping block yet again with some trouble. And we'll see how that appeal goes. Next headline here, Eric Reed, free agent safety, is saying that his national anthem kneeling is the reason for why he is not getting offers from NFL teams out there. Recently took to Twitter to talk about this, saying, quote, GMs aren't the holdup. It's ownership. People who know football know who can play. People who know me know my character. He went on to also tweet, the notion that I can be a great signing for your team for cheap, not because of my skill set, but because I've pro protested systemic oppression, is ludicrous. So Eric Reed still on the open market, a former San Francisco 49er, claiming that the you know protests that were going on here were the reason behind the ongoing process of him not getting any offers from any NFL teams. So staying on that theme here, we got a headline about Colin Kaepernick and that ongoing collusion case. So Texas, the Texans owner, Bob McNair, was questioned in the Colin Kaepernick grievance case that was recently dealt out. So McNair was a part of this deposition here, and Kaepernick was actually present for the meeting. And according to reports, McNair had no idea that Kaepernick was going to be there. So that kind of made things awkward, fair to say. And there was actually a report that came out yesterday that Colin Kaepernick was working out in the Houston area, throwing footballs around, all of that stuff. So it kind of makes sense now, right? The deposition today, McNair was present, so was Colin Kaepernick. And Kaepernick, of course, alleging that the NFL has conspired against him in keeping him unemployed in the league. And we have a weigh-in for all you guys watching this special edition of NFL Daily. Let me know in the comment section here on Facebook Live as well as YouTube. Should an NFL team sign Colin Kaepernick this offseason? I want you guys weighing in. Be a part of the program here on Facebook Live and YouTube. We, of course, appreciate your opinions. I'll be tracking what you guys say. 
I think an NFL team should give Colin Kaepernick a chance. When you have guys like Scott Tolzien and Tom Savage with starting opportunities at the quarterback position, it's like, come on. Am I right? Hit me up in the comments section. Let me know what you think. That's wrapping up this special edition of NFL Daily. I'm Cam Rogers. Check me out on Twitter at MrRogers99, and I'll see you next time.